start off by talking about diseases. So we've already spoke about um, viruses, bacteria, and then we spoke about viruses. And all of these things we know can lead up to diseases. And yesterday you were able to watch a video um, which helped you with some of your learning um, about diseases and things of that nature. So we're going to go through this. You are going to be handwriting your own notes. Not a lot of information, but you are going to be responsible for taking your own notes so that you can still build up that um, technique of good note taking. So obviously, what would the name of these notes be called? Disease or diseases. And everything you write on this paper is going to be about. Please don't throw your books on the floor. Don't move from the paper. All right. The objective of this lesson, you do not have to write this down, but at the end of the lesson, you will be able to identify some diseases, and you'll be able to classify diseases into two categories. If you're not able to do this, then I have failed at my job, or you were not paying attention. All right, what is it that you know about diseases? What makes a disease a disease? So what, what would you call a disease? What would be your definition? Does it affect your immune system? Okay. Okay, it causes you to show symptoms that you have a disease, but not all diseases do, though. Okay, an illness or something that causes you not to be able to do something. I can't leave this building today. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, the buildup of enough bacteria or viruses to affect you, Gary? Affects homeostasis. Okay, let me um, throw something out there. Right now, what's going on in your stomach? Bacteria eating food. Digestion. Digestion, but what else is going on in your stomach that is ruining homeostasis? The acid. The acid is eating your stomach, and your stomach is? Preparing itself. Preparing itself, but does that mean you have a disease? No, that's normal. So that kind of is like the homeostasis, mm, it does affect homeostasis, but that doesn't classify it as a disease. It is a disrupted normal body function. Now, everything that disrupts normal body functions is not a disease, but a disease is something that disrupts normal body functions. These are your notes, so you don't necessarily have to have it at um, the heading, the standard heading, but if you like to put that on your paper, that's fine. Let me repeat what I said just in case you didn't catch that. Just because it disrupts normal body functions does not make it a disease. If I fall and hurt myself right now, it, I, I could break my leg. If I do, God forbid I do, but if I do, um, it is disrupting my normal body functions of being able to walk, but it's not a disease. But a disease would be something that does disrupt normal body functions. Okay? Questions? All right. Let's take a look at some information from a paper in 2008. The title of it was Tree Man Returns Home from Surgery. It started off to read as an Indonesian villager dubbed Tree Man for massive bark-like warts on his body returned home today after doctors removed six kilograms of growth. Day Day, a 37-year-old from rural West Java was taken home from Bungdung City after nine months of operation to remove the woody growth that had smothered his hands and feet, Dr. Ramada said. It continues to read, his massive warts, which began growing out of control when he was still a teenager, were diagnosed last year by a U.S. dermatologist. What's a dermatologist? <laughs> Someone who studies skin. The U.S. dermatologist said it was a result of a combination of human papillomavirus, we learned about that virus, and a genetic disorder, meaning that it's something in his genes that doesn't allow his immune system to fight off the papilloma virus. You may have heard about this or seen this on the Discovery Channel, but it was a result that looked like this. Those are his hands. Would this be considered a disease? Yes. yes. Does it disrupt normal body function? Yes. So now let's move on. Types of diseases. There are two types of diseases. They fall under these two categories. What are they? Contagious and non-contagious, or non-communicable and communicable, or non-infectious 
and infectious. So non-infectious would be non-communicable or non-contagious. If you don't know that, you might want to jot that down in your notes as well. Infectious would be communicable or contagious. Can I move? All righty. So let's first start off by talking about non-infectious diseases. Are they contagious or are they non-contagious? No, no. These are non-contagious, meaning that you can't catch them from someone else. If someone has a non-infectious disease, you being around that person will not make you have it. They can be caused due to a couple of things. You're not going to catch it from someone else. Well, if you can't catch it from someone else, how do you get it? It could be genetic or hereditary. And it runs in your family. It could be congenital. A disease that's congenital would be something like fetal alcohol syndrome. Knowing information that you know about fetal alcohol syndrome, what does congenital mean? Acquired birth. Acquired birth, before birth or during, your, during the pregnancy process. The mom doesn't have fetal alcohol syndrome, but the baby does because excessive alcohol. alcohol. Acquired at birth. Acquired at birth. No, no, because it's not, it's not infectious, it's not something that's hereditary or gene. Good question, though. A non-contagious or non-infectious disease can be because of environmental, meaning malnutrition area, lack of nutrition could cause certain um, non-infectious diseases, lack of sunlight. It also can be caused due to chemicals, like cigarette smoke could cause cancer. Lead could cause lead poisoning, which is a disease as well. Yes. Are they necessarily made out of lead? It's possible. It's possible. If you survive the bullets, yes. All right. So, let's look at an example, more examples of non-infectious diseases. Take a look at this example. Uh, just give me a second, Moby. Dear Tim and Moby, recently I learned that I have ADHD. Can you tell me and all the other kids about it? From Gary. Hey, no problem, Gary. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. You may know ADHD by its simpler name, ADD, or Attention Deficit Disorder. Kids with ADD aren't necessarily hyperactive. ADHD is a behavior disorder that shows up very early in life. Behavior disorders can be inherited. Kids who have ADHD usually have a close relative who also has it. When one identical twin has it, it's likely the other does too. Doctors aren't exactly sure what causes ADHD. They think it has something to do with the levels of certain brain chemicals. So it's important to remember that it's nobody's fault. ADHD does not appear as the same thing in all kids. Some may have learning disabilities, and others may have trouble with fine motor skills and coordination. Still, at the heart of ADHD are three core characteristics, inattention, impulsivity, and hyperactivity. Kids with ADHD are just as smart as everybody else, but they have more trouble focusing. When kids can't concentrate, no matter how hard they try, and get bored with something after a few minutes, this is inattention. Well, I know, sometimes I space out during class, but kids with ADHD really have a hard time staying focused, more so than other kids. When someone acts impulsively, it means they don't think before they do something. This might mean calling out answers to questions out of turn, or throwing a ball at someone who isn't ready. If you know someone with ADHD, you probably see that they're really energetic, to the point of not being able to sit still and feeling really restless a lot of the time. 
This is hyperactivity. Daydreaming, forgetfulness, being disorganized, and problems interacting with friends and family can also be symptoms of ADHD. That's true. All of us have these problems every now and then, but kids with ADHD have to deal with them all the time. Lots of people think that kids with ADHD are troublemakers, and that's just plain not fair. Kids with ADHD try hard to behave just like other kids. It's just a whole lot more challenging for them. Many people with ADHD are really creative thinkers. Some historians believe that Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Edison, and Albert Einstein had attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Well, not everyone who has problems with paying attention has ADHD. There are special tests that are used to determine whether or not a kid has this disorder. But only a doctor can diagnose you with ADHD. There are also treatments that can help kids with ADHD. Combining medicine, special techniques, and emotional support from parents, teachers, and doctors, people with ADHD can learn to control their attention and minimize impulsive behavior. Sometimes the most important support comes from good friends. Being able to channel all that extra energy into other things really helps too. There are kids with ADHD who outgrow the disorder when they're teenagers. But even if you carry it into adulthood, you can still learn to live with it. Again, an example of a non-infectious disease would be, so far we know, ADHD. Some other examples of non-infectious diseases that we've mentioned thus far would be cancer. Another one would be something called hemophilia. Who remembers what hemophilia is? Nope. Okay, kind of. If you're hemophilic and you can't even heal it. heal it. So what's hemophilia? You, don't you can't heal your wounds. You can't heal your wounds. Why? Because your cells don't reproduce correctly. They don't? Reproduce. Not that they don't reproduce. They don't clot. They don't clot. So people with hemophilia are missing the protein that makes their blood clot. Now, you do not have to write all of this down. Um, I would just write the example and say, uh, can't clot blood. It is genetic, so it's not something you can catch from someone else. So what happens is, let's say they bruise themselves. If you bump into a table and you bruise your elbow or your knee, we're going to heal from the bruise. It'll turn a little red and black and blue, and that's our blood coming to the surface because we've actually cut ourselves underneath, but then it heals. That clot happens, it heals, it turns a little brown and then yellow, and then it fades and goes away. Well, people that are hemophilia, they form what's called a hemotoma, hemotoma, which where a pool of blood is under their skin, and it does not heal. They have to take medicine to form clots for their blood. In addition to that, if they cut themselves, even the slightest paper cut, it could be deadly. And again, that's genetic. You cannot catch that from someone. Another non-infectious disease would be something like anemia. Anemia can be genetic or hereditary. Again, you're just jotting down some things. It is a lack of iron in the diet, and it causes a reduction of red blood cells, which in turn reduces the amount of hemoglobin we have in our blood. Hemoglobin is what allows our blood to have the oxygen, so then we also have a lack of oxygen in our blood. Because of that, it results in tiredness, shortness of breath, um, some heart failure, some yellowing or lighting color of the skin, and we're cold, not we, but people who are anemic are cold often because they have the lack of the red blood cells and the oxygen in the blood. Again, that's environmental or hereditary. Let's check and see what do you know so far. Besides the ones mentioned, meaning the non-infectious disease mentioned, can you name other non-infectious diseases? Jack. Huntington's disease. Good. Diabetes. Johnny. Diabetes. Yes. Asthma. Parkinson. Good. Autism. Osteoporosis. Lyme disease. Cancer. We mentioned that. <coughs> Dementia. Dementia. Tuberculosis. Can be contagious. It is an infection. Jack. Cerebral palsy. ALS, good. <laughs> it's called uh, 
John did. Yeah. John. Alzheimer's, good. And one more, Jalissa, redeem yourself. Arthritis, good. All right, so now let's look at infectious diseases. Infectious diseases are contagious, and they're caused by pathogens. remembers what a pathogen is? Jalissa. A germ thingy? Okay, Mason. Okay, it does use the cell to reproduce, but it doesn't always need to. Jerry? It does attack that area, but that's not just the definition of it. Okay. It, 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 it's a microorganism that does what to you? Makes you sick. That's exactly what it is. A microorganism that causes diseases or makes you sick. But not all microorganisms cause diseases. For example, yeast is a microorganism that's in yogurt. That does not make you sick. Again, you don't need to write all of them. If you don't remember what a pathogen is, then write that definition. It's important to know that not all microorganisms make you sick. The microflora that we have on our skin, that doesn't make us sick. That's there to eat the bad bacteria. The lactobacilli that's in our intestines doesn't make us sick. It's there to help break down food so that we can digest it. Darius. That is also the same yeast that can be pathogenic to give you an infection. And that would be an overgrowth of yeast, like a yeast infection or um, thrush. Thrush is a yeast infection of the mouth. True story. My little brother is a weirdo. He still is. He always has been. He is a weirdo. And when he was younger, about two years old, we're going grocery shopping. Now I'm 16 years older than him. So we're going grocery shopping, me, my mom, and him. And he's in the cart. And we're just going to the car. You know how you got the conveyor belt where you put your food on, yeah. right? All the stuff goes on there. He leans over and he licks it <laughs> for no dang on reason. So, of course, my hands go flying and I'm popping them all over the face. Like, why would you do that? I don't understand. I was like, so he's like looking like, well, two days later, of course, he has thrush, which is the yeast infection of the mouth. The overgrowth uh, of fungus in the mouth. Yes. So, um, yeast can be bad, and it can be, uh, it's in our, our breads and stuff like that. Ways path pathogens are transmitted. What does transmitted mean? Spread. So how are pathogens spread? I'm going to give you a couple ways. You already know these ways, really, but then we're going to talk about some examples for the ways. One is in the air. How are they spread in the air? They're Sneezing. Boring. You saw the video yesterday where the girl coughed or sneezed right in the other kid's face. <laughs> yeah, and little kids don't know yet. You have to teach them. But and but you guys do it sometimes too. Coughing, sneezing without covering your face. So that's in the air. Just simple breathing. It's passing it in the air. Another way that it's transmitted is through contaminated objects. Things like money. Oh, that's a good one. What else? Doorknobs. Food. Doorknobs. Conveyor belts. Conveyor belts. Belt. Well. Toys. Phones. Good. We use a lot of these things here. The copy machine. The table. The computer. The keyboard. Clothes. Guess what else? Makeup, ladies. Lip gloss. Lipstick. Blush. Eyeshadow. Mascara. All of those things. Yeah, but we don't want to talk about those because we didn't share them. All right. Person to person. For example, handshake. Kissing. Hugging. Laughing. High fiving. We say high fiving. High fiving. Um, what else? That's, that's true. You can pass sex. You pass pathogens that way. Now here's the thing. 
A person can be a carrier. That says a person can be a carrier. That should mean a person can be a carrier. A carrier is someone who passes on the disease. Again, a person, people can be carriers, or a person can be a carrier, and that is a that is uh, someone who passes on the disease. The key thing is, some people don't even know they're sick because you may have the virus or the disease in you, and you have no symptoms. That is true because they may not have the symptoms. People that have chickenpox may not have popped out with the little bump, so they don't even know that they're passing around. The flu sometimes is like that. Mono sometimes is like that as well. You don't feel sick, therefore you don't think you're sick. Can I move? Okay. Other ways that um, pathogens are transmitted or sent from person to person or just picked up from organisms is through animals and insects. Animals are vectors. They're not carriers. They're a vector because they transmit pathogens from one host to new organisms. They, like a mosquito picking up malaria and passing it to another person. Okay. It was the rats that did it. All right. Um, an example you guys just mentioned was malaria. Another way that pathogens can be, uh, oh, another example for animals and insects would be something like Lyme disease, that's from ticks. And also animals, rabies. Food and water is another way that pathogens can be transmitted. If your water is not sanitized, we have a water system, treatment system that, um, the county uses to keep our water clean to stop or reduce the pathogens. But if we don't reduce those pathogens, those get into us because we use water for everything. As well as our food. We need to clean our food properly. We also need to store it properly. You cannot leave food out in room temperature for long amounts of time and then come back and eat it. The refrigerator will slow down the growth of bacteria, but it will not stop it. So you do need to be very careful and very mindful of those things. Cooking your food to a temperature where it kills the bacteria. Eating raw eggs is not good for you. You're putting yourself at risk for bacteria. Yes. Types of infectious diseases. Some diseases, infectious diseases fall under the category of bacterial diseases, meaning that caused by bacteria, very good. They can be very serious if not treated. Now your body will do everything it can to fight against it. Oftentimes there are natural remedies that you can use, and most times there are um, hospital remedies that need to be used or could be used. Anyone have this? How do we treat bacterial diseases? This is an example of one. This is strep throat. So one example would be strep throat. How do we treat it? Antibiotics. Brendan, stop throwing out just any old answer. Use your brain first. But what is it? It's a, Maggie? Antibiotic. Because bacteria, is it alive? Is bacteria alive? Yeah. They are what kind of cells? Prokaryotic cells. So they are cells. They are alive. They're single celled organisms. Therefore, we have to kill them with antibiotics against little bodies. Antibiotics will slow down the growth of bacteria or stop it altogether. And again, this is strep throat. Hey, I have a question. Yes. Well, it, it's not just on your tonsils, it's on your throat. You still got the back of your throat. You don't have the back of your throat at all? That means you don't have a throat. You have your back of your throat, you still have that, your skin there. I don't think I do. All right, another type of infectious disease is a viral disease. 
which means it's caused by a virus. Something like chicken pox. And we talked about a whole host of other ones. It is difficult for medicine to treat. Why? Because it's not alive. So we can't find anything to kill it. We only can treat the what? The symptoms. So when you get a fever or you get, you're get you hurting and you're in pain or you're itching, we can treat those things. But other than that, we have to let the virus take its course. We prepare our body with stuff like orange juice and sleep and food so that our body can be prepared to go through the warfare that it's about to go through and fighting off this disease that it thinks it can kill. So we prepare our body so that it can have rest to fight it off and so that it can recuperate after fighting. Yes. Yes, you. Uh, what does the chicken box have to do with the chicken? It doesn't. No, it doesn't. We, and we talked about this already. All right. Another infectious disease, which we're all so familiar with and knowing about, but I want to give you some more information because some of you throw some things out there that are not true, but this is a very infectious disease. Let's take it. Yeah, medical research is tough work. That's left to professionals. Dear Tim and Moby, what is AIDS? It sounds pretty scary. From risk 106. AIDS is short for Fired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. It's a disease that damages the body's immune system. Well, your immune system is your body's way of fighting off sickness and infection. T cells are an integral part of the immune system. They stand guard over your body, waiting to organize and drive off invading pathogens, viruses, and other harmful microorganisms. But a virus called HIV, or human immunodeficiency virus, can cause particular trouble for your immune system. Instead of just trying to get into your body, it attacks the T-cells directly. <laughs> when enough T-cells are destroyed, the immune system is weakened. Illnesses that your body can ordinarily fight off, like the cold or the flu, can get in and cause serious health problems. As you may have guessed, HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. A person is said to have AIDS when the immune system reaches a really low number of T-cells and it gets to the point where the body can't fight off infections. Well, you don't catch HIV like you catch a cold. You can't get it from hugging, holding hands, sharing a sandwich, or sitting next to someone who has the virus. And it's not spread by mosquitoes or swimming pools. HIV is only spread when the bodily fluids from one person come in contact with the inside of another person's body. Most people contract HIV through unprotected sex and intravenous drug use, and the disease can pass from a mother to her baby, usually during birth. Well, there's no cure yet, but progress has been made with treatment. People with HIV are living much longer lives now than they did 15 years ago. HIV is difficult for medicine to deal with because it's a sneaky little virus. That's one reason why it's important for adults to get tested routinely. Infected people can sometimes live for years before symptoms start showing up. Sometimes one treatment will work for a while, and then the virus will mutate or change form so that the medicines don't recognize it. Doctors and scientists are working hard on a vaccine to prevent AIDS, just like the ones we get to prevent measles or mumps. But there's still a lot of work to be done before a vaccine or a cure can be found. I'm not sure they'll let you back in the lab. I mean, you've already broken, like, 52 test tubes today. Hey, hey, um, maybe you're just too clumsy for lab work. disease would be parasitic disease. Obviously this would be a disease that what? Parasite. Where there's parasite. Now, parasitic diseases could fall under the category of bacterial and viral diseases. They're also caused by protists and fungi and also even tiny invertebrates. Meaning tiny organisms that do not have a vertebrate backbone, like the worm, like worm. Some examples of a parasitic disease, you just said tapeworm, what else? Lice. But there's tiny, tiny things that are feeding on you, so you will consider that type of disease. Char? That is one. <laughs> 
Another example would be malaria. Malaria come from mosquitoes. mosquitoes. So the mosquito could infect you with a um, with the blood of someone else that has the malaria. So what happens is once it bites them or stings them, it picks up their blood and it comes and it stings you and it puts it in you. And then if someone's pregnant, if someone's pregnant, they can also pass it on to their infant. The um, the spore that's within the blood is called plasmodium vivax, or plasmodium um, P. vivax, and it can infect someone else. Keep your hand out for one second, Jeff. Malaria would, the symptoms of malaria would be like headaches, fevers, um, muscle fatigue and pain, back pain, sweating and chills, dry coughing, um, your spleen could become enlarged, and you could have nausea and um, vomiting. Jack. I don't really think so, the history behind that, because I don't think it survived in it. I don't think so, because it would be a work for us. But we all really don't know, so, because we don't know, still don't know enough information about it. Yes. Good question, because there's athlete's foot right there. It is it's caused by a fungus. Hold off your question for a moment. So athlete's foot is caught by a fungus, a fungus that is feeding on the organism to survive. Just because, I would love to tell you, it's called athlete's foot not because athletes can get it, but normally it started where they noticed that it was in the feet, and athletes wear what on their feet? Shoes. Shoes and socks. And when they're doing a lot of running and playing basketball, football, soccer, hockey, tennis, all of that stuff, volleyball, what's happening? Sweat. They're sweating. And that sweat is collecting around their feet or any area that's covered up. And a person who will not take a shower after playing that sport, you just maybe you go out to eat and then you go home and you hang out and you play a video game and you just chill out and say, I'll get to it. You are letting that sweat just build up and sit there and turn into bacteria on your skin. Therefore, it is now turning into, turn into fungus and it'll eat at your skin. So that's why they call it athletes. But it's not just for people that are athletes. You can get it from not washing your feet and then wearing sneakers constantly, sharing sneakers or socks with other people. MRSA is another um, parasitic disease. It's a bacterial um, flesh eating disease. Mason? Uh, it's like raw from the skin peeling off. Ways to prevent the spread of pathogens. You want to write down ways to prevent. One way we prevent it is through um, where we pasteurize things. In the 1800s, a guy by the name of Louis Pasteur um, developed pasteurization. And the way that he figured it out was he had some wine and he let the wine sit out. And he, when he came back to it, he noticed that it had some um, bacteria in it that had grown. And he's like, whoa, what's this? How can I stop this from happening? So therefore, he heated up to a very, very, very high temperature. And when he did, he killed the bacteria. So he decided, what can we do to our other liquids that we use to stop this from happening? And is bacteria growing in our other liquids? Liquids yeah. like milk. So therefore, they put milk through pasteurization to stop the bacteria from growing. Um, cheeses, uh, different things that we eat. Cheeses are the main, uh, and milk are the main things. Uh, so you'll notice on your milk carton it says pasteurized. Another way to prevent pathogens from being spread, some people don't even drink. Um, Cow milk. They'll drink things like soy milk or almond milk or um, rice milk. Goat milk. But that still needs to be pasteurized. Right. Of course it will. The mold and the bacteria. All right. Another way to prevent the spread of pathogens is people get vaccinations. Vaccinations do not help once you have the disease. They are there to prevent you from getting the disease. Vaccinations, V-A-C-C-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. Note this in your notes. You should know how to spell it. Some people do not get vaccinations, and that's perfectly fine. Some people decide not to get it because they build up their immunity. And this is another way to prevent pathogens from being spread. You take care of your immune system. How do you take care of your immune system? William. 
eat good food, good. Does that mean in the morning I'll eat a, um, a biscuit in the afternoon? For lunch I'll eat a burger and then for dinner I'll eat pizza. And I ate my three meals, I'm good. No. no, what does it mean then? Balance. So in the morning you need to have something that's balanced. Some type of dairy or some type of fruit or something like that. In the afternoon you need to also have a vegetable or a fruit, something that's healthy for you. And in the evening, the same thing. You have to give your body the ammunition it needs so when it's bombarded with all of this bad stuff around it, it can fight it off. What else do you need besides a healthy diet? Exercise. Exercise. What else? That comes from the food you eat. Cleaning yourself. Good. What else? What about sleep? Yeah. Yeah. Some of you don't go to bed till 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, kicking and twittering and tweeting and Facebooking and all that other stuff. You need to be sleeping, giving yourself the rest. Because if you don't, you're not hurting me, you're hurting yourself. Because then when a disease is up against you, your body's on coffee break and couch potatoing because it's tired. Another way that's been developed to uh, prevent the spread of pathogens are antibiotics. Remember, antibiotics can only kill bacteria. living things, bacteria. So if you have the flu, an antibiotic is not going to help you. But remember, in taking an antibiotic, it doesn't just kill the bad bacteria, it kills the good bacteria. So then you have to eat well to build up your good bacteria. What's the main way that you can stop the spread of bacteria or pathogens? Hygiene, put those scissors down. Cleanliness, washing your hands, washing your body. Cleaning up after yourself, whether it be your room, my classroom, the area that you're in, the place that you eat. Cleanliness is very, very important. Any questions about that? Okay. Well, in class, a lot of you have been infected by a germ. And we know that the number one thing that you can do is washing your hands. Now, let me say this. The majority of the population do not wash their hands correctly. Lots of people actually do not wash their hands at all. People go to the bathroom or they get ready to eat and they don't go to the kids to the um, sink and wash their hands. So they'll just leave out not washing their hands. The majority of the people do that. Chase, you be my example of a person that does not wash his hands. All right, another person, um, a, a larger population of the people, but not that large, um, I'm sorry, a smaller population than the largest that don't wash their hands, they wash their hands, but they just run it underwater. That's it, no soap, run it underwater, or they may just take the soap, put it on the palm of their hand, and do this, and then they think they're done. Or they just run it on their fingertips, and they do that, and they're done. Jessica, you will be my halfway washing hand washer. You're just going to run it on your fingertips and be done. All right? A um, larger, I'm sorry, a smaller population of the people wash their hands appropriately. What's the appropriate, no, leave that there. Stop that yourself. What's the appropriate way for washing your hands? Just, you wash it like this? No. Just wash it like this. In between your fingers. Scratch your fingernails. Darius, what did I tell you to do when you were little? Make your hands fight. Get them fighting. To make them wash your hands. So, before we get started, if I can get my three people up here. Wiggins, you're the third person. If I can get these people up here, and let's check your bacteria or the germ on your hand. Here. Oh. 
see if we can see it in here. It's hard to make your hands fight. No, you're not supposed to do anything. Alright, so we can't see it under there, so I'll try to just put it. Okay, quiet. I'm going to end this, the online video now, but we're going to continue with the class. We can't see underneath the black light from here. All right, so we can see. Oh, this is the germ on my hand. If I can get my three volunteers, first up, I'm going to have my person who does not wash his hands. Hands under there. Other hand. I need you guys before you wash your hands. There it is, a little on your hand there. On that side. Turn them over. Let's see the other side. Other hand. Both put them together. It's a little on his nail. He had been infected when he came in. Jessica? The, I volunteered. Both your hands. Come on. Put your hands under there. There they are. Now you go wash your hands away. Just, just minim, go minimally wash your hands. Like I told you, just, your, just so you put on your fingers and run it underwater and come over here. Just under the water. Nope, so here's the, the look. Come on, Wiggins, cut it out. Just the skin.
Those are things that you should think about. You should always be using the toilet seat cover if you're someone who has to sit on the toilet or go to the bathroom that way. You should be using that. Hovering is okay, but sometimes you may slip. You don't want that. So there's a lot of things that you can do to prevent the spread of bacteria. You are not, although Darius went ahead and washed his hands correctly, could he stop himself from the pathogen still spreading? Yeah. No, because I touched him. Again, would still spread the pathogen. You cannot be a person that says, don't touch me, don't do this, don't do this, because then you isolate yourself from everything and you don't live a life. We are going to be bombarded with pathogens and things that are spread around that could get us sick. But that is why we have to do things to help prevent them from getting us sick, like hygiene, like uh, building up our immune system, eating well, sleeping well. If we own medicine, taking our medicines fully. So that is concluding this. Any questions?